Hey there, and good morning. Welcome to the It's All Good Money channel. I'm Brian, your host, and today we're going to be talking about this board. This is the S17 Plus hash board that we started working on in the last several videos, and we took it from 0 ASICs to um, 65 ASICs, both all four temperature sensors are registering. And while we still have that uh, CI and BI channel uh, or signal tracing issue, it's the same issue that we had on a perfectly good, working, reliable hash board. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to proceed forward. And yesterday I told you that I was going to put on some of the uh, some of the nuts to mount the new and improved uh, let's go let's just do this there we go to mount the new and improved uh heat sink now this is the this is the one piece heat sink uh what they've gone to now and and what i recommend on my brian recommends dot tech page is the three piece heat sink uh, but i have some of these and so i'm going to go ahead and use them uh because i paid for them so let's go ahead and use them. But whether you use the three-piece one, uh, like I showed yesterday on the other board, or you use the unified single unit, uh, they work the same mostly. Um, last night, what I did is I tend... Let's see, let's put this on the microscope here. Let me flip back over to this and turn on the microscope cam. Look up there in the top right hand corner or the right side there and you will see. See, there we go. I tinned it, right? So I didn't put solder all over the entire bottom. I just I just used a little bit of solder. I did this with my soldering iron. Um, I'll do a video. I'll, I'll do a, like a, a compressed video showing how I tin these. But honestly, it's a it's a slow tedious process because I do them manually. I don't use the I don't use the 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 tinning tool like I do with the chips because frankly it makes a mess and I didn't see a benefit of doing it. So maybe it, maybe if I ever get better at it, I'll I'll uh, use that. But right now I tin my I tin my my nuts with uh, a soldering iron. So let's get going because I've got an hour and. I want to finish this this uh, video today with the miner or with the hash board in my test miner. Um, I'm going to have it running on on uh, the stream, and I've got my other computer where I manage uh, my my miners. I've got that computer set up ready to connect into the test miner and show you it working or failing. So let's jump into it right now. Uh, I I tried a few different ways. To figure out the uh, the best way to show you how this works, um, what I need is a microscope at a weird angle, and it's the same angle I'm looking at. So, sorry, folks, this part's going to be one of those things you're just going to have to do it yourself and experiment. That's what I did. Okay, so let me get these off. I tell you what, we don't need as fine as this looks. We don't need this right now. So let's get it off the off the screen. Uh, we do need our, our our screws in a minute, and we're going to need these little spacers. So that's why I've got those out. Okay. So let me show you what I have here. You you can you can mount these nuts without this. Okay. This is just a guide. It's it's actually made of of a fibrous material. It feels like it looks like. Uh, like fiberglass or maybe carbon fiber, uh, probably fiberglass. I can't. This was like twenty nine bucks off of Thanos. Uh, I should put a link to this too. I'll, I'll get that on my Brian's recommends tech page. Um, anyway, you, you, I've done them without this. The beauty of this is it makes it faster and it shields the the heat from getting onto the chips. The other thing I noticed, I learned this last night while I was doing some of these, I was checking uh, videos uh, from the various manufacturers 
And one of the things they showed when they were mounting these chips, whether they were doing it with a robot or they were doing it manually like we're going to do today, they had a fan underneath. They were cooling the backside of the board. Ha <laughs> ha! So that's what we're going to do today. You'll notice I've got my cooling fan on, and we're going to have we're going to turn that thing on in a second. But let's get into this. So you need you need flux. I'm going to move this down just a little bit because it's just I feel like I should have moved my camera forward. Okay, well. All right, so you need some flux. I right, give a dab of flux. Let's put a little dab on there. That here. Let me pull my camera, uh, my my thing back in. Give you guys a quick look. See, that's all we're talking about. Just a dab of flux, just like that. Okay. Now, how about I do this? How about I put it? How about I place these? While I'm on, while I've got the microscope cam going, let's go, let's go microscope cam. Microscope cam, there we go. Okay. Yes, I'm excited this morning because this is, this is like game time. We're going to drop it in. Now, sometimes it wobbles around a little bit in here, but I'm okay with that. Okay, because as long as you get it close, that's what counts. Now, there's a... Right here, where my tweezers are, there's a capacitor right there. You can see the tray starting to line up. So I always try to make sure that I bump that so it's not going to be real close to the capacitor. This guide helps you to do that. Okay. Remember, solder side down. Put it in there and get it all nice and lined up. All right, there we go. Next one. Extra bit of flux there, kind of smooshed it down whenever I did it. Cool. And the last one. Now, the other thing I did. There we go. Cool. Perfect. The other thing I did last night when I was working on these is I would do... How come my video lights are off? Let's see. I don't know. Does that fix it? I don't... Ah, hold on a second. My lighting is wonky as all get outs. Let's go see here. Yep. There we go. Okay, that helps. Now, what I was saying is, um, when I was installing these last night, I would install a row, and then I would jump over to, like, over here. I'd install this row, and then, and, and I was letting it cool in between. Then when I finished that row, I'd jump back over here to this row, and then I'd come over here and I'd get that row. I, get, I moved around. I didn't just go row after row after row because if you do that, you start putting extra heat into the board that you really don't want. Okay, now the question is, which one did we do? Oh, yeah, we did this one. All right. So, um, other thing, I'm using the smallest tip I've got on my hot air station. I've got my... Temperature set to 490, and my airflow is 77 out of 120. I don't know that you don't want a whole lot of airflow because you don't want it blowing around, but you also want it to you want it to get going, and uh, you really want to put that heat in as quickly as possible. So I'm looking for it to get nice and melty. And when it does, I hold that down for a second. I realize I'm not running my fan, so I turn my fan on. Whoops. The idea is we want to take the heat out of the chips, right? We don't want, we don't want to be heating up our chips and 
causing an un unscheduled reflow of the chip. I'm going to move it over here. Just get it on the side of where the support is, right? Okay. Let's look at that one underneath the microscope. Pull my microscope cam right there. There we go. See, it doesn't move. And it's got that little gap. If I flip over to microscope, got that nice little gap um, staying away from the capacitor. Cool. Awesome. Let's get going. I am going to well, forgive me for tell you what I need a I need an extra light. Um, crazy as it is, there we go. Well, maybe I don't know. I need to figure out a way to add an extra light to it because what I'm looking for really. There we go. All right. So I jump in here. The flux gets real melty real fast. Once that thing starts, uh, once that little nut starts kind of, um, it sinks a little bit and it starts to, with the air pressure, it will, it'll kind of move around a little bit. And you know you got the the solder all nice and liquidy underneath. It's real fast at 490C. Okay, do the next one. Okay. I've got, I've just got my gun. Oh, uh, you can't see it because of that. Okay, let's do this. Last one, let's go overhead. So I just got my gun in my hand. I just drop it down to the side here. Okay, last one. Let's throw the light there. Press and hold, let it stick. And that's it. Just like that, we've got uh, we've got the nuts mounted. I'll give it a second. Okay, I can take my hand off. I move my heat gun back over there. Cool. Give that just a second to cool off. Yeah, that one's kind of hot. Woo! Hot, hot, hot. Let's go look at it under the microscope. Okay. It kind of walked up just a little bit. And what I'm talking about there is we've moved a little bit close. So you could have been a little bit farther down. But basically, this nut is getting soldered to that, to that, uh, that rail right there, that power rail. I can grab it. I do this. I like to do this test while it's still in the thing. Grab a hold of it with tweezers. Move it around. See if I can get the get it to pop loose. Because the next test that I do is even more exciting. Okay. Good. We're we're good there. All right, let's turn that back and off. Cool. All right. Pop this loose. Okay, we're done. Yay, we're done with that. Um, this is exciting. Woohoo! Okay, so. Uh, let's see, I think it was this, I think it was this row. We'll check, we'll check multiples. But what I do, 
to check, I grab a pair of needle nose pliers, okay? And I just grab, and I pick it up. If, if the nut can't hold the board, then when you go to screw the heat sink to the board, the nut's gonna pop off and spin. And do you wanna know what the worst time for that to happen is? You've got all the heat sink grease on there. And then the very last one spins. Talk about annoying. Now, I guess you don't have to be as dramatic and grab needle nose. You could, uh, I guess you could probably just grab it with your tweezers, but I like having a better grip, so that's why I use my needle nose. Now, word of caution. Let's get, let's go back to the microscope cam. All right, so let's just look at one of those nuts. What do you see up there, right? Look over there in the, in, the, in the microscope box. But if you see that, you've got, um, where are we? Right there. You've got a capacitor here and a capacitor here. So if you come in with these big old honking pliers and you go right there and you're not, you're sloppy, you'll, you'll hit those capacitors and possibly break them off the board. So, you know, make sure you're not a bull in a china closet when you're coming in there. Um, I always come from the other side. I come from the, from, from the side, uh, from the left side, I guess, if the board is oriented this way. Basically, it's, it's the opposite side of where the capacitors are because there's less stuff there to break. And I'm also not going all the way down. The, the needle nose are not touching the board. Alright, well that is it. Oh yeah! <laughs> Let's test. <laughs> How about we test, right? So, we, we need to know that it works. Alright, let me move my coffee out of the way. It's a great coffee cup, by the way. Crossbridge, Crossbridge Church here in, in nearby. That's a good thing. All right. I almost told you where I lived. That could be bad. And if you know me, you know where I live. For the rest of you who don't know, in the Texas area, towards the Gulf Coast, where it's getting cold today, Hot dog. This is why I want to get this miner working because I want to get more boards hashing. Because price of Bitcoin's going up. We've hit a new uh, year high. That's great, right? Okay. Let me do something real quick. Okay, it's connected. Get back into my OBS screen. Cool, cool, cool. Whew, that was a big sparky. All right, so what we want to do is we just run, want to run the test, right? Because we've been putting heat on the board and everything else. So we just want to run our tests. So we're going to see real quick, 65 chips. Let me show you that. Woohoo. 65 chips. Yeah, buddy. Okay. Now then, let that sit for a second. Now I'm going to go hashtag temp. And I'm going to run the temperature test for a second. Load that thing up. All right, good, good, good. And I'm going to have a sip of coffee while I let that thing do its thing. So the neat part is, for the most, for most of the time, once you get used to it, you can, you can just use this tester, the, t the team monitor tester, as much as I 
complain about it because they're this thing I think is junk. Um, but uh, the you can use the team miner tester for temperature sensors and and just getting the 65 chips. Uh, where I find it to be helpful to have the on screen. There we go. The on screen stuff on my computer is when I'm doing jump tests, right? It's just easier for me to look at the screen as I'm jumping uh, chips than to look on this little bitty screen. Although it does, I mean, it works. It's just, I don't know. I, li I like the graphic. All right. Temperatures are looking good. We don't have anything going crazy. Um, we're ready. Man, we are ready. Hash, hash, baby. All right, while well, I'm letting that thing do its thing, let me grab some heat sink grease. Yeah, <clears throat> or some thermal paste. There we go, got my... Oh, by the way, um, I made a video about it yesterday, but I just want to kind of mention it again. So some of these boards or some of these chips that I cleaned off on screen yesterday were just, when I went back and looked at them closer and felt them, they were just terrible. Um, so I ended up going over every single chip um, and cleaning it up. Same technique, right? Uh, the difference was... I ended up instead of using my my Kester, I ended I switched back over to my MG no clean paste. There it is, eight three four one. I don't have much. I, I'm I'm running out. I'm I'm more than halfway gone. So I went ahead and ordered some Amtech off of Northridge Fix. Uh, you know I can put the link to that and go to the website northridgefix.com, or you can go to brandrecommends.tech and. The link to the exact flux I ordered will be there um, later this morning. All right, so let's go ahead while I'm diddle daddling around. All right, so I got my thermal paste. Nothing fancy, thermal grease. Uh, high 510. Get the stuff off of eBay. I'm sure you can get it off of Alley. I don't know, maybe maybe you can get it off of uh maybe you can get it from your local computer supply store if you have one of those. You sure can't buy it at Best Buy or or anything like that. I don't know if Micro Center carries it. All right. What do you think? We got sixty five chips, all good temperatures. It's just purring, right? Look at that. None of those none of those temperatures are getting out of out of uh thirty nine C. 40, okay, we got a 40C. Woohoo. All right, this board's ready for. Turn it off that. Put these out of the way. All right. I'm going to put that there. Tell you what, let's just take this off because it's just in my way. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, let's see. What should we... Let's go overhead cam. All right. Yep. Cool. Overhead cam. All right. So, um, they make... I can turn the fan off. They make a, a stencil uh, that you, you... Basically, what you do is you take the stencil, you put it on, on this, lay it on this, and then you smear your heat sink grease, but... I think it's just as easy to to dab on each, and you don't need a whole lot. There's one other thing I want to point out with this kit. Most kits come with it. If uh, if your kit does not, oh man, shucks. Okay, I didn't do some prep on this board. Well, okay, cool. We got to. What I was just about to tell you is these kits, which don't come with instructions, there's a plastic, let's see if I can, yeah, there you go, you can see, see the reflective? 
See how there's reflective on this on this line, but there's not reflective on this line. That's because there's a, a 3M plastic layer that that you put on here. And you also need to um what I find is that these holes that they cut out aren't quite right. So what I do got a handy dandy screw or handy dandy um I think this is the right one. Drill bit. Yes, it is. I just I'll put it in there and I just go to town. All right, and because we're on screen and I would like to get this done a little bit more efficiently. The problem that I'm having today because I'm in a rush is that how did I do it? Well, I want to include all the fun steps even when I can't remember them. So why is the plastic there? That's a good question. Well, Plastic is there because um, <laughs> this is these are your power rails, right? So if you were to measure across here, I think you get about a 1.8 uh, volt drop um, across each of these. If you were to measure from all the way here, where those little guys are, you measure from there all the way to this right here, you would get like 24 volts, okay? 21 to 24 volts, somewhere in there. And that it steps down, basically every time you have a domain, you're stepping down about 1.8 or so, whatever whatever 13 is into, into 24. Uh, you're stepping down that much voltage every time. Maybe it's 1.65, I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head. It doesn't matter. The problem, the kicker is there's a voltage potential from here to here. Now we're taking a solid base of aluminum. We're bolting it down to these nuts that actually have a voltage differential, i.e. current power can go from here to here like a direct short. So that's why you want to make sure that you insulate. And that's what they do. They use these plastic things to insulate. So you use you you have plastic on the heat sink and you also have these plastic nuts. Literally you're trying to insulate the uh the heat sink itself from the screws and the nuts. That's the whole idea. All right, let me grab my drill. This section is not brought to you by Ryobi. Uh, I, don't know. I like my Ryobi. It was it was a it was an upgrade from my my Harbor Freight junk that finally wore out. Um, let's see if this works. I did have to I did have to get a new chuck for my drill though. All right, that, that side sucks. Let's do it this way. That's better. Hit the go button there. So why am I doing this? Because the holes are a little small. And I need that extra wiggle room. I got three more rows.
joy of doing things live. Okay, yay. All right, so if we look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the microscope out. Probably be out of focus, but let's, let's throw it on here. Microscope, boom, boom. Wow, so bright. All right, now you can see. Okay. So what we've got there is, is, Insulation, good, 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 good. It's all good. Yeah. Now I got a wiggle room because let's see. Let's put one in. Let's see what it looks like on the microscope. Let me put my overhead on. So we're gonna do that. What? Where did it go? That. See the little white guy there. A little white spacer. Okay. Now, if I go look at what that looks like underneath. Yeah, see, there you go. See how the spacer looks? So, spacer protects the, uh, spacer protects the, the connection there. So, it isolates it. So, here we go. All right. Good, good, good. <laughs> I got too many. I got too many things and not enough hands. Okay. Let's go back to my overhead cam. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. Just about to put this thing on. There we go. Put that back into the camera view here. I saw that my my uh, my new. I, I ordered another one of these overhead lights so I can get a different angle. Hopefully, get rid of that glare right there. So it uh, said it shipped out yesterday. So here in a couple of days. Also got some mounts so that I can mount the lights to the walls and ceilings. All good improvements coming. Okay, let's get this going, right? So how much? Well, the only information I have, the only way I can answer that is to say a dab will do you. And looking at the board that that was that was upgraded from another shop, because uh, they don't come that way from the factory, uh, but they used enough that it gooped out, but it didn't like cover the entire board, right? So if I get a, a a good enough little dab that it will it will smoosh out over the edges we're good. Another trick is to when you're putting heat sink grease on, you got this like little I remember from uh, Dairy Queen. For those of you that have a Dairy Queen or had a Dairy Queen, queen growing up, used to make those soft serve cones and there would be a little bitty curly cue at the top. So, same thing when you're putting heat sink grease on. A little curly cue that you don't want that to just, you want that to kind of end on the on the chip and not going all over the board. Because if you do have to get back into this board, you, you would like to be able to do it without a complete mess. Although, a 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol does pretty good about cleaning things up, but it's still a mess. <clears throat> And I need another cup of coffee. Stayed up late, putting, tinning the nuts, and so I really, I knew the cold weather was coming. I've got a crazy busy 
uh, day in IT today. Y'all see how slow I am uh, fixing these boards. I, I definitely can't make a living doing this. Hope one day that uh, my efforts in Bitcoin mining, though, pay off, right? That's uh, that's kind of one of those things we, we're all hoping for, I think. Okay, so that's it. Um, I don't know. Let's, let's look at one under the microscope. Woohoo. Okay. See what that looks like. There you go. Yeah, probably too much. Yeah, see, nothing, nothing fancy, right? I mean, it, it is what it is. It's just uh, solder. Okay. But there we go. That's that's it. So let's let's dive back in and let me turn that off so it's not so distracting. All right, now. The worst part is if you put this thing on the wrong way, right? Because because there's there there are raised ridges, and if you put it on upside down, like if I was to put it on this way, I'd screw the pooch, and I don't think the holes would align right. Oh, darn! You know, that's probably something we should have done. Oops, we should have tested this thing. We should have checked to make sure all the holes lined up. Oh, well. Anyway, let's do it live. <laughs> so what you want to do, you want to look at your heat sink and make sure that the, <clears throat> the ridges, if you've got ridges, um, some of the heat sinks have just solid here, right? So they're, they're <clears throat> there's no ridges up and down. So, so then it doesn't matter if you put it up the up, upside down. <clears throat> Although there is something about airflow, but we'll get into that. When I install one of those, all right, because this is a uni, uni height, one height, so it doesn't matter that way. It does, but it doesn't matter about this. So the short ones go to the narrow spacing, and then I just hold it up. I look for the holes. Okay, that's the other benefit of using a guide, right? So, there you go. Ha <laughs> that looks pretty good. Okay, so now you just, um, you grab, honestly, if you did it with a, I think if you did it with straight tweezers, like these, these are some uh, meta online, they used to be micro tweezers, but I dropped them, and when I dropped them, then I just uh, filed the tip off with a stone and uh, turned them into straight tweezers that I'm using now for things like this. Okay, yep, cool. You watch guys and gals who have done this for a while, it's just amazing to me how fast they can shove these things down in those little slots. Crazy. So, I might see what I'm doing here. Let's figure this trick out. Putting the tweezer on the inside of the hole. Letting, letting the tweezer expand and then so it grips it from like that, see? Pretty slick. Just figured that one out. Okay. Get back here. And this is exciting. This is a zero ASIC board. Uh, four videos ago. And I had no idea where this board was going to go. In fact, I told my friend the other day at coffee, I said, man, it's doing the same stupid thing that the that another board did. Actually, I got two other boards that, that uh, 
have that BICI problem. They also have temperature sensor problems. Good news for me, I have a whole bunch of temperature sensors on hand, ready to go. So, this one reports temperature sensor problem. First thing I'm going to do after I pull it out and cuss at it for a little bit, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all four temperature sensors. Why? Because they're cheap. I've got an abundance of them. And I can just rule that out. Okay. But, let's think positive thoughts. And we will, man, come on. If this was a, if this, oh man. Okay, this is just being a little butthole, butthead. Part. And did it get in there? I think it did. <sighs> so, white pieces on aluminum. It's got to be pretty boring. I mean, it doesn't. I need to figure out a way to have like a zoom feature. That would be nice, right? So I could zoom in a little bit. Uh, Maybe I can do that. Maybe it's a scene. Maybe I'd do that with a scene where I could zoom in. This is this is working really good until I quit. There we go. All right. I think I figured out what I'm doing wrong. I think I got premature releasing. There you go. Did you see the new Dodge commercial that they uh, had for the EV? I saw the Super Bowl, Bowl commercial. Really? Seriously, people. Silly. But I don't understand. Is the EV Jeep. When I had my Jeep, I used to take it off-road. Now, not like some people, but, I mean, I used to take it to one place that we had to carry extra gas cans in. Uh, because of how far it was to the nearest gas station. So what are you going to do? You're going to carry, I don't know, a whole truckload of batteries? I don't get it. Oh, wait a minute. No, you're going to plug your Jeep into the, a solar cell and let it charge for a month so you can... Drive home? I don't, I don't get it. Anyway, sorry. I digress. Bitcoin price. Over the last 24 hours, although I'm looking much longer than, than the last 24 hours, but Bitcoin price hit a year high, right? That doesn't mean it's not back to the 69K that it was a year ago or whenever but we're in a bear market and we just hit a high uh so if you mined or bought bitcoin in the dip or recently while it was the price was down you're feeling pretty good i'm feeling pretty good i've seen the bitcoin i've mined gone up in value So, haha. So the weather is getting cooler outside as I'm talking, and I can hear my miners spooling up and spinning the fan spinning faster. That means it just kicked up to the next profile, the higher profile. Woohoo! And more hash rate, baby. Hash, hash, baby. Okay, there we go. That looks good. Now, I don't have a super great way of doing this. I just drop these in with a... Like that. And then I look for my screwdriver. You know, if I had a magnetized screwdriver, 
one would think that um, that a magnetized screwdriver would be very helpful. Okay. I just, I'm not pressing. I'm literally just letting the weight of the screwdriver. Now, use a good tip, right? Don't, don't, don't use the old gnarly, worn out tip because uh, that won't, that'll slip. Oh, yeah, here's, here's a novel concept to think of. <laughs> These are stainless steel screws. Uh, anyone want to talk about the fact that stainless steel doesn't work with magnets? Hey, there's Bandit. He came in to say hi. I think he's trying to get on the channel. I think he wants a. I think he wants some attention on the channel. He saw the cat on uh, Lewis Rossman's channel, and so now he wants to be. He's like, oh, like I'm a better looking black cat. But I'll tell you what, Bandit knows better than to jump up on my repair bench. Yes, you do, sir. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Here we go. All right, just a couple of turns. I'm not trying to tighten these all the way. I'm just getting the four corners. And I'm dropping them in the process. So. Try not to stick my, my head in the shot constantly. So I've got a pair of tweezers that uh, I bent the tip, right? They were, they're were they curved tweezers. And I bent the tips to make give it a little bit of a hook. Okay. And so um, those are real handy because I can just come along with sides. Slip them down. Uh oh. This one doesn't want to behave. All right, let me put this over here so I can see it. Let's see what's going on. I mean, all the holes look pretty good, so. Why, why do you not want to? All right. You know, if I had done a test fit, I would have caught that it looks like that one is kind of not quite straight. Okay. With just a bit of a wiggle, and I was able to get it. Um, let's see. So now I can push it back. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Alright, I don't think I'm going to have any more problems. Alright, let's keep going. I'm not getting these things tight at this point, so... Um, the odor doesn't really matter, except to... Make sure that I'm getting them thre the threads to start as I go. Okay. If I need to, I want them loose just in case I need to be able to wiggle. Uh, I can do that. Okay, so there's four, four nuts per. There we go. Okay, you saw me turning a whole lot, but or I guess you didn't see me turning a whole lot. So I was turning a whole bunch, but it, it I, I was just trying to get the, the screw to move into place. Um, so there's four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 
28 screws, and it's just like... This is so fun and exciting. Uh, I'm so close, right? So uh, we're going to get, as soon as I can get these screws plugged in and tightened up. Then we're going to put this thing in a, I'm going to put this thing in a miner that's behind me. I'm going to shove it just off. Hopefully, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to put it in the farm. I've got I got power here at the bench, so I'm going to stretch it as far as away as I can. Um, kind of in the adjoining room. I'm going to move a box around to try to help block the sound, because if you've ever heard a miner, they're loud. We're going to turn this thing on live. Now, what I might have to do, <laughs> hopefully, this this one goes well, and hopefully we don't have a a fire or anything. Yeah, I don't think so. But if we if that happens, then my next time I do uh, t when I turn one of these things on, we'll have the Acer Cam, or I'm sorry, the ASIC Cam, and it will be there to catch the wonderful destruction of a board. I could put one like inside the miner. That would be fun. Um, I got a little camera that could do that. All right, so this is interesting. I just kind of. Did you catch that? I just sort of dropped it, right? I just picked it up, and I just kind of lined it in there, and I said, drop. And then I just kind of pushed it around. So maybe that's the key. Maybe you don't want to be so, so precise. Just kind of get it in the right general direction, and drop. Well, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that one of my meetings got rescheduled because otherwise we'd be ending this video just about now. Okay. There we go. Let's see, we got four out of seven rows done. Are almost done. Okay. Oops. Now, some of these kits come with screws or come with springs. And if your kit comes with springs or is a, or is designed to have springs, use the springs. This kit does not. Um, that's why that's part of the reason why I'm not using this kit anymore. Or I'm not buying any more of these kits. That are more expensive, but um, the Thanos mining kit, for instance, comes with springs, um, and that's nice because it means that you you get the right amount of tightness pressing against the chip, but not too much. Kind of like how a CPU cooler works, right? All right. Same idea. You want you want just enough pressure, but not too much. Right. Turn this around because those are getting quite a quite a far away from me. Look at all those look at all those wonderful screws in there. Man, those are great. Okay. See, you got to get it at least close. There you go. Got to be in the general hole because. It's not in the hole, then there's just not enough room for the screwdriver. There you go. Uh, 
Sometimes I drop them straight, sometimes I completely miss it. So close. You know what we're going to do, though? We're going to put this thing back on the tester, right? Just in case flexing the board caused any problems. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. There we go. It did not want to get in the hole. It wanted to line up on the hole, but it just did not want to get her drop in the hole. Come on. Okay, all right, so um, so I don't go crazy with tightening them, all right, just I kind of let them I'm not really using the big grippy thing I'm. I'm using the, the shaft of the screwdriver to to turn it, and when it wants to come up out of the hole, then I say that's tight enough. So my wife showed me a very cool. PC repair screwdriver. It was, you know, digital. It had a, looked like it had a torque setting on it. I was like, man, I could use that. That would be cool. Other than our, she reminded me that uh, I had a, a $900 ASIC tester that I was not happy with and that I needed to, I wanted to replace it with the, the something like the new Stasic miner that has better support, way better documentation. <sighs> okay, so there we go. Uh, sometimes I just go back here and I just check and see, did it? All right. Try to look down there to see if I can, if I can tell how the, huh. Okay, ooh, that was interesting. Hold on a second, I'm gonna do this. All right, there's definitely no way for me to get the view here. But basically, I'm looking down. I'm looking down, and I want to make sure that the chips kind of smooshed out the grease, which they did. Do the same thing on this side. Uh, this chips, this board's really good. I've got just the right amount of smush. Oh, wow. Let's see. Can you see that? Man, I wish I had autofocus. But there you can see the grease just smooshed out. Just the right amount of smoosh. We didn't get too much. So, perfect. Hot dog. We're close. We're close, people. We're close. Woohoo. All right. So, oh. Almost forgot. We need to put this back on. So let's go ahead and put this on. And 
I'm gonna do it off camera just because it's a little bit faster. Little bit. I don't know. Don't know that's really all that much faster. There we go. Can you see that? Yeah. That's still. Camera angle sucks. All right, so. Anyway, you get one side going. And then the other one in there, and you line it up. Now, keep in mind, just FYI, I think I mentioned this in a previous video, that when you have this, when the board is operating, there's actual voltage current here. So you could have, the potential could be that this could short to something. So um, you definitely don't want this touching that. That would, that would be bad. Okay. Seem to have lost my screw, but the good news is these are basically the same screw, although the head's up. Oh, there's one. Yeah. Ah, there it is. So there's a little bit of difference between the two, and I don't know if it's a big deal, but um, these have a thicker washer. The ones that come with the kit, they have a little bit thicker washer, a uh, lock washer, and a little bit larger flat washer. So uh, I try not to try to use the the heat sink screws for the heat sinks. How are we doing on time? Oh my gosh. An hour and four minutes. If I was trying to make a living doing this, I'd be, I'd be a very poor person. I have about, I don't know, 10 hours fixing this board. Of course, I think I paid $30 for the board. So, all right. So what's my time worth, right? That's, that's the big question. All right, just turn the fan on. Let me pop over to my tell it to reconnect. Okay, so this is an interesting problem that happens um, sometimes with the Team Miner software is that it will um, it will not you can't reconnect. So when that happens, I have to go out. And connect it. All right, let's uh, go Team Miner Power. Here we go. All right, we, we do the same thing as before. We do test. 65 ASICs. Very good. All right, good, good, good. About three amps. Great. Now, of course, there's no way I can't test anything. I can't hit test points now. Um, I guess I could if I needed to on the backside. Um, uh, temperature, 65, and where are, there's the temperatures. Okay, good, good, good. All right, I'm going to let that sit there for a second. Only to discover that I have no coffee. That is a sad, sad thing. Okay, well. No coffee for me. All right. Well, wow, look at that. Now it's down to two amps. So we're really just chilling. With those heat sinks on now, we've we've dropped we we've we've dropped the overall operating temperature of the chips. That's a good sign. So hit the hash test test button to stop it. Put my power leads back up. Probably shouldn't be clipping them to the there. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And make a little bit of room. Turn this off. Go back to the overhead cam because 
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is time. We're going to make some room on the hash, on the board, on the bench. Plug this baby into a miner. Okay, I've got a miner over here. This is the one. I don't know. I think I did this off. I think I did this off camera. So this is a miner. Yep, dot 184. Okay, now you, now you can hack me. Okay, come on. Um, <laughs> so this is a, uh, a, a, a miner chassis. Let's, let's go to the bench only mode. Ah, there you go. That's better. It's still kind of below. Um, but this is a minor chassis that, uh, I, it has the control board up top and it has the power supply and I put a working, I put that, that, uh, board in yesterday that I pulled out of my other miner and I tested this. So this whole rig has been tested. Um, it looks like this, this came from VMS. So uh, that's called cool. Now. Yo, let's go back over to the overhead cam real quick. Overhead cam. So, in case you're wondering, the way these are labeled out, this is this is going to be chain one, chain two, and chain three. Okay, so chain one, chain two, chain three. This is the new chain. Um, I don't know what this... I've not been able to find anything out about what this actually is for. But, we are going into... I'm going to slide this thing in to, oh, man, what's a good angle for this? Got to figure this out. Ooh, look how dirty this thing is. Yeah. Okay. This is my test chassis. So the one thing you want to be careful about when you're doing these is you got to be careful on these fans that you don't, don't uh, harm the wiring, right? Okay. Now, because I know that this was, uh, go back to overhead. Okay, so I slid it in. I slid it into the, the, the chain one spot. Technically, you could put it in any of them. And depending on what, what cable you use, that really dictates what chain it is. Um, but I put it into the traditional chain one slot. And uh, then I'm going to go back to overhead. I'm going to. I'm going to, before I put the, okay, these, I'll tell you what, I'm going to use, you can use, so some of the miners, I, I suspect that this is the actual screw that comes with the miner. I, I really do. I think that this is it. Uh, but I was able to get these. They're very much the same stainless steel uh and they have a hex head on them so i uh hex head and a, and a phillips so i use those fyi when you're working with these bars uh, especially when you pull them out always short across them real quick because there might be some some uh, power stored in the power supply in the capacitor and uh, there are big enough capacitors in there that if it gets you it could hurt all right, hey, forever heavy metal man. Hey, man, great. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so we're putting this thing together. All right, and plugging it in. All right, flipping it back over. I think I'm gonna make a. What do you think? Um, I think I want to do a camera angle, like I did for the testing. So we can see both the sides and the, the top. Um, you don't have to put a screw in um, to hold the fan in place, but I find I like to. Uh, but I'll tell you why it's not necessary, but you can if you want to. All right, so the reason why it's not necessary is because there's this little lip right here, and this little lip goes inside that. And so when 
And you put... Let's go bench back to bench only. Nope, that sucks. Okay. I need... Right. Sorry, guys. Um... There we go. Alright, overhead. Alright, so there we go. I got the power supply cover, or I'm sorry, the controller cover back on there. See, so that little button, and that little tang, tang, goes in there and it holds it all together. So with that being said, I don't know, I don't know the best view. Because what I'm going to do next, I don't have a camera for it, but let's, that's fine. Sit tight, hold on. Alright, I'm going just off camera. I'm plugging it in. Plugging it in here. And plugging it in here. Oh, oh, you hear the miner spinning. All right. We got that going. Let's go to, there we go, the Acer desk. All right, this is the big time. Let me ping it. 192.168.171.184. Okay, it's pinging. Okay, that's great. Let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm a I'm a Linux guy. This thing's running Linux. Okay, so I'll just give it a second. It'll let me in. All right. There we go. Super secret. There we go. All right. What I like watching Oh, yeah, baby. There we go. All right. So what you see on the left there is the chain has been initialized. 65 chips are detected. All four fans are running. Okay, we just spun up. You can hear it in the background. Yeah. How about that for some background noise, folks? Hot diggity dog. Looks like we got a repair. All the way. It's doing it. Let's check over here. Initializing. Gonna start hunting here in a second. Start mining. Yes. That right there is the line you want if you're watching it in the log. That log file to, to, to tell. Right there, there's the command that I use. Looks like chip number four. Or temperature sensor for hey, we, we just got some some uh, inconsistencies here All right look at how cool chip 33 is so I might have a couple of chips that need to be replaced this because they're drawing too much current but it's in auto tuning mode so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry too much about that it'll figure it out Cool. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching. Um, be sure to give this a, a like and and a sub if you if you want to be notified when um, new videos come out. So we went from a, a zero ASIC board to 65 chips. It's hashing. It's working. Yay! So this was a board that someone else said couldn't be repaired, and they sold it for for cheap. With a little bit of time, a little bit of know-how, we got it working. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And I will see you with the next exciting uh, board repair.